Hi, my name is Samir Desai, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to calculate the Ka and Kb for conjugate acid-base pairs. Of course, before we get into the calculations, let's make sure we understand what is meant by conjugate acid-base pairs. The best way to illustrate conjugate pairs is through the auto-ionization of water. The auto-ionization of water is a reaction with two equivalents of water, so two H2Os. These waters react to create two products. One product is the result of the deprotonation of water, or the loss of hydrogen, yielding a hydroxide ion. The other product is created from the protonation of water, or the addition of a hydrogen, resulting in a hydronium ion. This is a great reaction to illustrate conjugate pairs because water is known as an amphoteric species, meaning it can act as an acid or a base. It can either lose a proton, as we see in the creation of the hydroxide ion, or it can gain a proton, as we see in the formation of the hydronium ion. Now, conjugate acid-base pair differ in a proton, or one hydrogen. Since hydronium ions are strong acids, the conjugate pair, or H2O, will be the base. Similarly, if hydroxides are strong bases, the conjugate acid will contain one additional hydrogen, so this water will be the conjugate acid. Skipping ahead to the second bullet, water has an equilibrium constant, or Kw, of 1 times 10 to the negative 14. That value has been experimentally determined under a constant temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, or 298 Kelvin. The dissociation constant of an acid and its conjugate base, like this Ka times this Kb, or base times its conjugate acid, like this Kb times this Ka, will always equal the Kw. This concept is important, so let me rewrite it. Assuming a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, Ka times Kb will equal Kw, which is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. If we're given the acid dissociation constant and we know the Kw is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, we have two knowns and we can solve for the base dissociation constant. Similarly, we can determine Ka if given Kb. Let's make sure we understand this information by applying this knowledge to a question. In this question, we're given the Ka of phosphoric acid and asked to calculate the Kb of the conjugate base. To rewrite this in a more digestible way, we have phosphoric acid, and although not stated, it's assumed that the dissociation occurs in water. Since we're told that phosphoric acid has an acid dissociation constant of 7.5 times 10 to the negative third, we know the product will be a conjugate base. The conjugate base is the result of the deprotonation of the acid. In this case, phosphoric acid will be deprotonated, which yields dihydrogen phosphate, an ion with one proton less than H3PO4. And the proton that was removed from the phosphoric acid is accepted by water, resulting in a hydronium ion. We're asked to find the base dissociation constant of dihydrogen phosphate. Given the Ka of phosphoric acid, and knowing that the Kw of water is a constant that was determined experimentally in the past. In order to determine Kb, let's recall that multiplying the Ka times Kb of the conjugate acid base pair is equal to Kw. Let's isolate Kb, the value we're solving for, by dividing both sides by Ka. Therefore, Kb equals Kw over Ka. Now we can plug in our known values and solve for the Kb. The dissociation constant of water, Kw, is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. And that is divided by a Ka of 7.5 times 10 to the negative third. Therefore, Kb is equal to 1.3 times 10 to the negative 12th. As long as you're given either the acid or the base dissociation constant, you should be able to solve for the other. You should now feel comfortable calculating these values for conjugate acid-base pairs. Make sure to follow up with some practice questions to solidify this concept. 